It is now December, and the holidays are right around the corner. And so naturally, I think it's time to talk about Goosebumps. In 1992, author Robert Lawrence Stein began a book series for children called Goosebumps with the publisher Scholastic. If you're unfamiliar with them, they were kid-friendly horror books that were published every single month, and they were popular. By the time the original series had ended, the 62 book series had sold hundreds of millions of copies in over 20 different languages all around the world. At a rate of 20 pages a day, R.L. Stein was giving the world goosebumps as quickly as the world could buy it up. In 1995, the franchise was adapted into a television series for Fox Kids. And as with any children's craze, there was merchandise galore. It's safe to say that if you had, or knew, or were a kid in the early 1990s, you were probably acquainted with Goosebumps. As R.L. Stein's book series was becoming a worldwide sensation, Disney was continuing their decade-long quest to appeal to more kids as well as teenagers. When it came to wholesome family entertainment, they were pretty well off. Mickey and the animated classics, and even the films of the Disney Renaissance, gave them more than enough to work with. And with the creation of studios like Touchstone, not to mention the then-recent acquisitions of Miramax and Dimension Films, they were rapidly filling their library with more adult entertainment as well. But there was still a constant chase for the coveted teenage demographics, not to mention the more edgy side of children's entertainment. Disney MGM Studios, being a theme park that was born out of partnership with an outside studio, served as the perfect place to introduce properties that Disney didn't outright own themselves. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, The Twilight Zone, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ace Ventura, Power Rangers, and eventually, Goosebumps. Announced in June of 1997, and with plans to open that October, Goosebumps Horrorland Fright Show and Funhouse was to be a 15-minute stage show followed by a walkthrough attraction that led to, well, a Goosebumps gift shop. I mean, this is Disney. It was a collaboration between Stein and Disney that would prove to be more than just a business arrangement. As it turned out, R.L. Stein was a major Disney fan. His wife, Jane Stein, was quoted as saying that, For Bob, taking Goosebumps to Disney World is like going to heaven. He adores everything and anything Disney. On October 8th, the show would premiere to the public along New York Street, and it was... well, it was something? The Goosebumps Horrorland Fright Show was more or less a 15-minute magic show hosted by Amazo the Magician, and featured cameos from Goosebumps characters such as Curly, Slappy, Cuddles, and The Executioner. Kids from the crowd would be brought on stage as magic trick volunteers, and after the short production, guests were able to walk through the fun house, which consisted of a maze of mirrors. The Orlando Sentinel reported a, quote, lukewarm visitor response upon opening, a reception that resulted in a couple of changes to the show early on. The fun house itself was considered to be a letdown, since guests were expecting more to the space than just a maze. So Disney dropped its emphasis by removing the end fun house from the attraction name and adjusting the lighting and difficulty of the maze to make it a little bit more challenging. The Goosebumps characters were also added to the maze to add a little more variety. With such a simple execution, the show would run five times a day throughout 1998 before ending that fall after Halloween. It was a short-lived show, but then again, that was typical of the era. It is worth noting that in the early fall of 1997, just before the show premiered, Scholastic would announce for the first time a decline in sales of the books, which resulted in a 40% drop in their stock price. Just months later, in December of 97, R.L. Stein would formally end the original run of the Goosebumps books and kick off a new series called Goosebumps Series 2000. So I think it's safe to say that while Disney had their mind in the right place by pursuing Goosebumps for the parks, they waited until the tail end of the craze to actually act on it. So perhaps had Disney launched the show a few years earlier, it would have lasted longer, but we'll never know. I think it's also safe to say that its short lifespan could be partially attributed to its mismatched format. Disney was looking to grab onto a more edgy demographic, but they didn't seem willing to offer the content required to do so. While Goosebumps was no nightmare fuel, 
it was still a horror series, and there's nothing really scary about a 15 minute long magic show. Except for the part where I guess you're stuck watching a magic show. Thanks for watching, and if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. Join me in February when I inevitably cover something Christmas related.